two of them. <laughs> I, try, I try to catch you. I try to get, and I try to bait me. <laughs> That's a crazy task. <laughs> Yo, episode 237. Wow, made it podcast. <laughs> 237. Ridiculous, but we're here for the get down per usual. And it's going to be an amazing show like they all are for whoever is listening in Lagos, Nigeria, Taiwan, India, I forgot the city, Dublin, somewhere, I think it was Sweden, uh, Detroit, Toronto. I feel like Holly still listens sometimes. Um, And wherever else, holler, huh? Probably that's the homie. Yeah, I still haven't seen y'all play Apex yet, though. Um, we, huh? Yeah, I'm still waiting for that. I don't stream Apex. Okay, but can you stream with her? Um, we got a lot to talk about today. Not a whole lot, but we're going to be covering Copa del Rey. What, what would you want to say? Something? We got to uh, talk about these Copa del Rey uh, results because there were some fun games in the Copa del Rey of Spain because we watch uh, international football here. Uh, <laughs> We're also going to be answering some ESPN FC questions. I got seven for Caesar. And we're going to talk. <laughs> and we're going to talk. Hey, look, this episode is going this to be the sh- shortest episode, dog. This I'm, epi- really, I'm not going to get stun locked or distracted. I'm going to answer only the questions for the show. Watch. Okay. We're, this episode is going to be as short as you want it to be. No, there's no ADHD will not win today. Okay, all right. Well, you're a certified rambler. Oh, my God, I forgot to tell you something. I got to tell you after we stop recording, too. Okay. <laughs> I just remembered right now. Um, but, yeah, um, let's get it started. Caesar. we had some big results in the Copa del Rey. Your favorite team, Atletico de Madrid, is out. They lost in the round of 16 to Real Sociedad. Another Basque team through Let's Go. Another Basque uh, team out there doing the damn thing. Um, 2 0. Oh, they brought in Luis Suarez towards the end. It was a joke. Oh, there was a time I saw him running. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is such a shame. It's sad. Yeah, I was going to tune into the game and then I was like, eh. I was like, they're probably going to lose. And yeah. I figured they would lose. I mean, this is also Real Sociedad played without um, Alexander Isaac, too. Literally, Yenizai scoring goals. They, they were dominating them, honestly. Yeah, they, they, that one probably uh, Nor- How do you, Norwegian, right? People from Norway are Norwegian. Which one? Is it? Yeah. If you're from Norway, are you Norwegian? Yes. Okay. That one, they got that big old giant Hovart or whatever. The, oh, the oh Solar. I never heard of him. I never he, seen him he before. Was, he's probably balling. Sometimes he just be balling. I'm like, you're just a giant. That's why you're balling. He is a giant and he did score a nice goal. Yeah, there you go. See, <laughs> he, sometimes we watch it. I'm like, he's making Isak look bad and it's making me angry. <laughs> he's a baller. Gavin Silva was out there balling too. And Athletic Code the, 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 the Canary Islands legend. Atleti is out of here, man. Oh, my God. Um, and you know what? I just want to say this, too, about them. I forever have lost respect for uh, Rodrigo De Paul. I had respect for him for, like, one day. And then when Mindy bucked him that time, I lost all respect for him. You, Your moment was when Mindy bucked him. My moment was when he was, like, about to receive a ball. And then Casemiro ran up and, like, punted it into the crowd and then turned and looked at him. I was like, God Damn, you can't be letting people do that to you. You just grab his shirt, grab his neck or something. You can't do that. That's that's the ultimate mega dunk flex. He he didn't even try to like make he just went to the ball and boomed it into the crowd and then went. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, uh, that was beautiful. You gotta He's turn like, to I'll, see, I'll see you in qualifiers. <laughs> you gotta you gotta turn to Casimiro and do this, be like, like he had a nose job. <laughs> um but yeah, they're out. Then we also had a big match um, that I didn't watch, but a uh, big rivalry in Spain, uh, Real Betis and Sevilla. Betis did beat them 2-0 in the Copa del Rey yeah, uh, four days ago. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, 2-1. Um, 
so yeah, Real Batista is advancing. Valencia also beat some minor team. Shout then we had today. For gear. For gear. Uh, uh, today we had Real Madrid edging it out against Elche. Uh, Lord. That was a close one. Um, who, who got that red card? For who? For, for Real Madrid. Marcelo did. Yeah, Marcelo, yeah. They started Marcelo. Um, you, you Really, I think the person that they missed the most was Benzema. Jovic was just really poor, really poor. Yeah, he didn't play bad. good today. And the problem with um, Jovic is that he's so starkly different than Benzema, but not in a way that's worrisome defensively like it's not like they're bringing on some young speed like not even like Inyaki is like a whole different speed and level right when he comes in there's like pace on the field and everything compared to sunset right so like that's like when 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 Jovic comes in you're just like uh he's just kind of floating around and like he doesn't have that like he really doesn't have that straight up striker mentality like there was that header, which he did a passing header, which I'm like, that's cute. But, like, you get that ball there, it, your whole soul should be trying to put that ball behind the net. Everything you have in your body should try to put it into that net. So he didn't really have that sauce, and he was looking kind of lethargic. And oh, sometimes he, when he looks bad, he looks a step behind everybody. And he kind of looked like that today. He looked a lot slower than everybody else on the field. Yeah, I think uh, Real Madrid benefits a lot from Benzema's movement. Um, yeah, Benzema like is is really good shape and moves really well on the field. Yeah, Jovic, Jovic can Jovic can get in the channels that Benzema does, but he doesn't do it as quickly and as like instinctively as mm-hmm. Benzema. And I mean, whatever, like he's not as good as Benzema. Like nobody's questioning that. But um, they definitely were struggling without Benz, but they still pulled it off. You had a, a goal by Isco, a nice little flick on a on a Danny Ceballos shot that would have definitely gotten saved. Danny uh, Jeezy Ceballos. Yeah. And then also Eden Hazard put a nice uh, shot away with his left foot when the goalie came out really far. Uh, you know, I guess it wasn't bad that the goalie came out, but, huh? Yeah. I know what you're talking about. If you're going to go out like that, you got to either get it or get a red card. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they say. You either got to get it, you got to follow me. You can't be letting that happen. And I mean, the the that was a very vet move by by Hazard. Just got that straight up, but that um clean left foot, like it's just a vet two footed player, easy money. Yeah, I feel like the the goalie just made it too easy for Hazard to get around him. It's not like I mean, Hazard's a good player. You know, like, you know I'm not gonna sit. It was a really good play by Hazard. You no, know, no, yeah, it was good. Space. He made space and got a cracking. Like, yeah, I mean, he he's a good. Space. That's what I expect out of him. Yeah, he's a good player, so he should be able to do that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, go- I, I would. I'd be more disappointed if he missed that. Like, damn, dog. Yeah, make that. The goalie could. I mean, the the goalie should have just looked at him and be like, ah, you ain't been good. To be this. fair, if I'm the goalie and I see Hazard making a deep left run, I don't think he's shown me anything to make me really want to go out there. I'd rather I'd rather see him try to get it cracking to come to me, right? Because he hasn't been really that like that guy. Like he hasn't been that dude yet all season. So I'd rather lose on that than me taking a risk way out there. And no, he was in no man's land. Yeah, that's let, bad. Get, let your defender catch up with him. Let your defender get a red card at least. He probably started going, and it was too late. He had to come yeah. in. He's like, damn, it's too late now. Yeah, this but good, good, happening too fast. Yeah, but good job for Hazard. I mean, it was oh a yeah, good goal. Um, and they ended up getting that win two one in extra time. Mm-hmm. Then we had the big match. For us, um, Athletic Club Bilbao versus Barcelona. And mind you, people, this is already an extra time game. I'm already like, come on, hopefully this game doesn't. I was like, so we'll see how this one goes. <laughs> it started off cracking second minute, Munin, Munin, beautiful goal. Um, and when Nico run on the right side, it was nice. Great run by uh, Nico Williams on the right side to get it to um, Munin, put it in. Then in the 20th minute for Antares with a beautiful goal also just standing there boomed it I was gonna text this to you but I was like I'm not gonna but I'll say it on the show I was like dang if Vinicius had a had a strong as strong as foot as that oh he'd be amazing yeah he would he would literally be the best player in the world hands down I mean, if he could shoot the ball as hard as Ferran Torres did, he was just standing there and he boomed. Ferran built like he can shoot a ball, though. He got, he got like, he's like sturdy and tall. I think Ferran Torres is I, like. I was literally texting Ben making jokes about Ferran. I'm like, why the hell are you 6'2 playing winger? What are you, Ronaldo? What are you doing out there? I, I think and then Ferran, he literally scored it the minute I wrote them. I'm like, all right, well, shit. All right, yeah, I, think, I think Ferran Torres is kind of like big and dumb. 
Like, I feel like that's why he can't, he didn't really fit with uh, Man City because I think he's like not like that, like clever type of player like that. I don't think he has like any moves for real, but he's like not, tall. Not that much. He's like tall and in shape. Yeah, he's so, fast, um, strong, yeah, fast, and uh, he has a good foot too. So the thing is, on that goal, it wasn't like he really created anything. He just ran, made a run offsides. No one gave it to him. Then he kind of snuck in behind the back line and was just sitting there. And then they gave it to him, and he was able to shoot it. So it wasn't like, like if you watched the Rao game, Vinicius was working his ass off just to make space. Like he was yeah. desperately trying to make space in that game, and it was hard for him. And playing damn near 100 minutes but this game he just had that spicy but scored it easily with a nice shot yeah i mean that that that's the benefit of like having a really strong shot <laughs> um yeah. but yeah so then it, it took a while for the next goal um in the 86 yeah. hmm? a while is right <laughs> yeah 86 minute there was like a, you know a big fumble in the box and the goal fell to Inigo Martinez but th- th- like th- th- Ter Stegen like saved it and they kind of just fell and like hit the bottom of dude's foot and fell in the goal. We're at that point where we're like, nice. Okay. Uh, Athletic comes in a win two one. Then Pedri scores off a of, um, Danny Alves bicycle kick assist. And Pedri puts it in the back of the net. So we're going to extra time. Danny Alves doing the most Brazilian thing a Brazilian guy would ever do in his life. Yeah. That looked and like here's the like... ball. Let me just whip my leg in air and see what happens. The, yeah, the most like Brazilian football. thing ever. Like, he just used all his birth in there and that move. All his soul of his birth was in there. He's definitely going to be out for two weeks after that. <laughs> like, you fell on your back hard. he did that and then they had to cart him off, that'd be, like, oh, the yeah. saddest, funniest moment ever. Um, then in the extra time, there was a penalty um, handball by Jordi Alba, who was definitely washed. Um, Nico Williams got him on the on the right side again, put the move, tried to send the, send the cross in. Jordi Alba couldn't get his body down for, uh, fast enough, hit his arm, and Murain put the penalty away. And that's how it ended, 3-2 to Athletic Club Bilbao. Barcelona is trash. Yeah, very trash. Um, Bar- Antu Fati came into the game in, oh. like, the 70th minute and subbed out in, like, the 90th something. Um, felt kind of bad for him because you just don't want to see people injured. Injuries suck, man. It sucks. But, like – Fragile just- Fati. Yeah, he, he he has the he has the he has the bailitis right now and he just can't stay on that field. Um I felt bad for him, but more getting angry with the the game just made me think about like as we talked about in the show before, like I don't tune into Barcelona games praying they lose. I tune into games now just like wanting to see how they look. And Xavi's taking that feeling away from me now. Chavi's making me want them to lose. I I hate the way he's managing his team. And I say to someone, I'm not in Barcelona, but I'm I, like, that's ugly. Like, that sucks. Um, there's good players in that team still, and there's people not being played. And I'm like, watching them play, and I'm like, wow, you could really just benefit to just, no matter how your results have been this season, having someone like the payout there. Like, just working it out, working it out. Like, the problem with Real today is like this squad has never played together and that, that that lineup has never played on the field together, like on a full game like that. So like you have people working it out, how it's working, it's weird, it's not transitioning well. So it's going to be a weird, ugly game, right? These people don't play together often. Uh, Isco barely shows up. It was just a strange mix of people today and they got the result. Barcelona, it's like you, you can have the same people pretty much all the time. And now that they're going to be um, um, not, they're not, re, there's no, not going to be re-signing with Dembele. And then this is situation with Depay. Like, I don't know what's going forward with that team. And, but I guess they're happy with Ferran Torres because he's Spanish and we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, um, I think Xavi is just a dictator and he probably just like wants what he wants. And, we, and what we, did we say in the group chat? Like, we were saying, like, he just has too much ego to be a really good coach. Yeah. He's too self-absorbed and has no op- – he doesn't have, he's not an open-minded player no. with with experience playing around, with, like, different areas and meeting different people. It's like, he's just very whole Barcelona kind of lifestyle. And, yeah, it's just – you're not going to be a good coach like that. you got to be able to, like, experience the world and, and appreciate other skill sets. Yeah, and I feel like he's – um he, like – probably sees the guy like he probably likes the guys he I would say similar to someone like Pep Guardiola but Pep can get away with it because he's been so successful but he's a good coach a a lot of times coaches just like they want the people that listen to them or like they they want like the yes players around them so he'll start these young guys because 
they like look up to him. But you know, Frankie De Jong, like, yeah, maybe he does like admire Xavi as a player, but he's also been playing his own career for a long time. So Xavi kind of coming in there and saying like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And it's like, all right, dude, like, you know, you, like you're te- like, I could see Xavi like telling DePay stuff and telling Frankie De Jong and telling yeah. Dembele and telling all these people, but like not telling Busquets and not telling uh, PK and not telling Jordi Alba. And the players are going to see that. It's like, dog, like those are your friends and you're not saying nothing, nothing to them or Danny Alves, but like we're getting reprimanded and like getting benched. Meanwhile, Busquets is like the worst player on the field. No, for sure. And I think that also like, it's almost exactly what you're saying. Like when you're a coach and honestly, you're not good at player management or people skills or communication, you're going to go with the people that just say yes automatically, then working through building relationships with people and finding that middle ground where you can compromise. He's not, he's seen to pay out there. It's like, I told you to be here the whole time and you keep going over there. I'm just not going to play you. It's like, Okay, well, maybe a guy who's been playing for 11 years at a top level, maybe you find out the best place for him that's effective for your system and him. Like, try to come yeah. with compromises or whatever's going on. Like, yeah. he doesn't know how to compromise. He doesn't know how to have – he has too much of an ego yeah, to exactly. talk to players to, to coach them. That, but that's coaching, though. Yeah. Coaching is, is, is literally all what we talked about, not just starting whoever says yes because they're young and they're naive or, or they're just or, down for whatever. Or it's your friend. Like, I can see DePay yeah. being like, okay, well, you're telling me this, but, like, meanwhile, your buddy over here is losing the ball and just fouling the whole time. Like, why don't you really? say something to him, you know? Or or at least it would make more sense if Xavi's going to bench Busquets or bench PK or not sign uh, Danny Alves if you're trying to say, like, I just remember that quote about uh, Xavi saying something about positional play. And I'm like, okay, well, I know DePay's out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if you're going to be like hard line like that about somebody who's like a, you know, kind of drifting around, then you got to at least be hard line about players that are like past their prime 100%. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it only makes sense. Why is signing like Danny Elvis happened? Remember all the comments oh, it's going to be really good having someone like this in the locker room, blah, blah, blah. You know what that sound like? I don't have a lot of locker room control, so let me bring a vet that's my friend in, and yeah. then we, then I'll be able to establish locker room. Here's a veteran, automatic captain, basically, and a friend. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Instead of saying, like, I want to just bring in all the best talent I have. You're just making moves to win the locker room, to be honest with you. Doug, you're just having, like, yeah, you're going to, it's just another, it's just signing your friend. Like, you yeah, play it with literally, him. it's just another, it's like another coach on the field, and it's annoying as hell. Like, yeah, it, it's, it, like, once again, somebody like Frankie de Jong, DePay, whoever else, who's not, like, born and bred in Barcelona, I could imagine them seeing Xavi be critical of their play, but I can't imagine Xavi's going to be critical to Busquets or PK or Jordi Alba or uh, Danny Alves. Like he's not going to reprimand them the same way he's going to reprimand DePay or Dembele or whoever. No, and that's not. not fair because even no matter how many times Dembele lose the bar, DePay's like out of position, so to speak. Um, they're doing way more for Barcelona than those four guys. I'm sorry, like those guys are past. Agreed. Yeah, so you know, but whatever. That's what he wanted to do, and now they're out of the. Uh, out of the cup and they're in the Europa league and they're, I don't know, seventh in La Liga. I don't know. And they're not good. Yeah. And they're very bad. And they're probably going to lose. They're, they're, they're they're like, it's almost like when you watch some PSG PSG games, like this is kind of rough to watch. Um, They don't, they're not a very good team. They don't know how to create offensive things. They just kind of pass around and hope that something works out for them. Yeah. They are sixth in the league and they are, are they tied with Atletico Madrid? No, they're seven. They're they're seventeen points behind Real Madrid, thirteen behind uh, Sevilla. Sweet Jesus, um, seventeen points behind Real Madrid. Yeah, they're they're. Oops, this, they're one. This is their last chance to get a trophy, right? That was their last chance. Yeah, that's it, right? Well, they, unless they win, unless they win Europa League, which they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I'm so. kind of excited to watch them. I hope they get clapped by like. Uh, What's that team that like that Nor Nor Norwegian Mid- Midland or whatever? Hope Midland come around and just dismantle them with my boy Wagner Love. Just come out there balling on them. <laughs> is he still? Wait, hold on. Yeah, he's he still... signed by them. He got signed by them. I'm like, by, so wait, I'm, by I'll who? Be, I'll be out there, puts four goals on them. 
Okay, they're dog. They're playing Napoli uh, for their first oh. round of thirty-two. I want I want o, uh, Osman to run all over them, please, dog. But ball out on them, please. Yeah, they might mess around and get clapped up one time. Um, all right, Caesar. I got you some ESPN FC questions for you, sir. Okay. Um, you know, I I will go through the ESPN FC clips on YouTube and take out the good questions that they. I mean, they're not the questions aren't great usually. Good questions, <laughs> but um. You know, they always give very whack answers. And it's my favorite segment. It's my favorite segment. We're, 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 we're better than them, so, you know, we give our answers. Yeah. Um, okay, Caesar. If you're Mbappe, would you re-sign with PSG? Um, okay, let me just ask you that one, yes or no? No. Okay, now, would you, if, like, and I'm talking like maybe like a two-year extension, would you, if they beat Real Madrid or in the round of 16, or if they like make it to the final and lose, or if they win the final, any of them situations, do you think it'd be a good idea for Mbappe to like extend? This is going to, I'm I, I, on, on my, on my dead grandmother. Okay. Just like Ninja on my dead grandmother, great grandmother. Okay. Mima, RP Thelma Walters. I'm not even being biased. I think every single one of those situations is kind of a good opportunity for Mbappe to reset no matter what. To what? To reset? Yeah, go to a new team oh. and not resign. He's already lost in a Champions League final with PSG before. If he wins, he accomplished that goal. Like, oh, I did this anyways. I came, I came to the city and I, the, the capital or whatever, and I did the thing. I did the damn thing. Every situation just seems like it's best for him to move away from that. Whether you win or you lose, you did it. You made it twice. You did it. You got knocked. You got. You lost to Real Madrid. Real Madrid beat you. Awesome. Like that means that when I go over there, I, can, I have something to show that I'm. I can be that person they're missing. This just seems like there's so many opportunities for him to capitalize on not resigning. That's only going to build his star up, give him a fresh start and a new opportunity. Now I think that I think you're. I just uh, resigning this honestly. If he resigns. That'll be another moment where we look and talk about, like, well, that was a mistake. I, honestly, I think so. Like, if not a mistake, it's going to be a waste. Like, you wasted a couple of years, and God forbid something happens in that time. Like, damn, dog, if you'd only just, like, you know those stories? Like, he only just left. So I I don't wish that upon him because I do like Mbappe a lot. I watched him many years, and I don't wish that on him. I want the best for him. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, any of those situations, I think that he should leave PSG and, and go to Real Madrid. Um the reality is like obviously a PSG fan or the PSG super fans are going to try to make comparisons between Real Madrid and PSG. And you just can't do that. dude. like Real Madrid is like, like arguably the biggest club in the club in the world has so much history, so much like accomplishments. You can't compare like PSG is not on the level of Real Madrid and they're never going to be like, it's just like, even Man lifetimes City, for that. Even Man City is like so good. They're still not on the level of Man United. So I think that Mbappe is a player that deserves to be on like the biggest of clubs. And PSG and the biggest of clubs should have the best of players too. Like at yeah. least a best player and a couple of best players. Like it's needed. Yeah, That's exactly. how you grow the sport. You need that. You need exactly. Barcelona's and Real Madrid to be huge and balling. Exactly. And they need the best players. And mm -hmm. the only thing that would the not nothing's going to change my mind about that, but the only way I could see PSG being different in a sense is if PSG, like once they got the money, the Qatar money, they were more dedicated to bringing up homegrown players. If they were a team that was like, okay, obviously we can afford big stars, but let's also incorporate like real our, our like Paris based talent. I wouldn't see them as, such a smaller club, but they're just, you know, I'm sorry. It's just like, they want to just get like the glamor players and it doesn't lead to success. It leads to attention. Whereas you're seeing a team like Real Madrid, like you're seeing players like Nacho and Lucas Vasquez and um, uh, 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 even Vinicius Jr. came there as a, like played in their uh, reserve team, Rodrigo, like, you're seeing players that came there very young or came up through their academy and they're still on the team and they're successful. I think you're a hundred percent right. I think my, and me saying that about him, not resign is 
also for the best for PSG. I think PSG actually benefits better for just having it be another year with Neymar Messi. You know, you get a lot of South America attention towards a club, Argentina and Brazil, two of the biggest countries in South America as well. Two probably two of the top five biggest players in the world in the last decade or so on your club. Make it a, 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 skept, a spectacle. Who knows what's going to happen? And invest that spectacle money, right, on lo- developing par- Parisian talent, developing talent within the country, and like Real Madrid did, sending youth scout programs around the world. They sent scouts to Brazil. They even had scouts in America. I know they were doing America. They know it was cute. Maybe send some people to Mexico. Just look around. Look around what you can do, what you can develop, what you can grab. Maybe some of these uh, other countries that you used to mess with and back in the day, French, uh, French-speaking French countries. Go over you there, do? you know, sc- scout some talent. You never see what you can develop and, and build towards the future. Yeah, it was it was a huge risk when Real Madrid signed Rodrigo and Vinicius at the same time. They had those press conferences, but look what can come of it. It's it's a win win no matter what. And and now look at them the development. Paris could have had that same type of success as well too. And there's tons of French talent there. There's guys I'm watching in these random clubs. They're like, oh, he's 18. Oh my god, he's so good. Like because you could easily have someone like that already in your team and loaned out and you know developing already. So. They need to do that, especially if they want to be a club that's here to stay. Then absolutely, they need they need to make a move like that. Uh, like, let me let me let me see where this place is. Um, Guendouzi is from Paris region, and and Arsenal got him from League Duh. He was playing in the second division of France when yeah. Arsenal got him. Like PSG has been focused on like splashing the cash getting the big players and that's cool that's great like i don't have a, like i don't have a problem with that necessarily but you can't compare that to some to a place like real madrid no and that's where mbappe should go no matter what and like you said if even if they win champions league it's like yeah hooray like we won champions league now like, i'm gonna try to try to do it somewhere else <laughs> yeah i mean regardless so why not look for the next killian you know um mbappe is not wasn't born in in uh that in monaco like he wasn't born in that no. region that yeah. a scout aqu- saw him and, and acquired him was like oh we're quiet about him from Lyon, I think. I think he yeah, was Yeah, yeah, exactly. He yeah. was in Lyon's academy youth team. They're like, oh, what's going on with this player? And actually, he bounced around a lot. I think he, like, went to other, other places, yeah. too. He did a lot of bouncing around as a youth. But, like, yeah, like, they saw him. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, we can come here. We'll offer you a, uh, an oh. opportunity, blah, blah, blah. So, like, you need to have scouts and, and people like that just working, you know, putting in work and looking for who the next guy is. What's next? Who's next? I mean, and that's not saying that uh, PSG hasn't had good youth talent come up. Bam has certainly seen people before in the past who look like they had a lot of potential that came up and didn't, but that doesn't mean you stop now. And that doesn't mean that's enough. People like Wendouzi, come on, dog. And this guy wasn't like dud. Like he was playing Domino League. I've seen that Domino logo. That, that's unacceptable. You, you got to be able to at least know that, you know, he was part of the academy at some point. At least you tried yeah. to have him in your system. What's the name? Um, no, uh, Mbappe wasn't at Lyon. I think that was uh, maybe Anthony Martial, actually. Yeah, um, Martial was with the, 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 I think Mbappe, like, actually was overseas. He was, like, in England or some of that, too. No, no, Mbappe. Mbappe was in Monaco the whole time. Um, he, he was, like, he was like, at Bondi, like, his like his neighborhood, and then he was, like, at Monaco from, like, a youth, actually. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he had some story. I, I forgot I was reading about that one time. Yeah. I think Martial was at Lyon before he went to Monaco. Um, okay, Caesar. Um, like I said, this episode is as long as you want it to be. So I didn't, I didn't get off track. Well, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. He, yeah, you're right. He, he came up basically 2013. God damn. Well, you think I was wrong? It's possible. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of crazy that Mbappe has 53 caps for France already. <laughs> what are you There's gonna have? A lot like more a, to go. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you gonna have? 200 before here? He's probably gonna have like Neymar numbers. Remember, Neymar is like all close to Pele. I'm like, oh my god, dude! Like, Same. you can still play for another t- six years. <laughs> okay, Caesar. Um, thinking about Man U's next coach. Um, would you rather them have Pochettino? What? <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going whoa, 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 whoa. Can we just hire a coach? No, no, because Ragnick, his plan isn't to, like, be the coach for that Oh, long. yeah, he said he's going to be, like, the director or something. A, he got a sweet job. He got yeah. the, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm going to be a, a director of management player job, right? He got, like, some sweet-ass job. Something like that. Yeah, only, uh, only, uh, must be nice. Right. 
Um, Pochettino or your boy Eric Ten Hag? Who's Ten Hag? The dude from Ajax. Oh, like I don't think he's. Isn't that Pete? Isn't that who's Peter Bowles? Or Peter Bowles. Who's that's that the guy? guy that's at Leon now. That guy's dope as fuck. Um, I would have got him to be honest. Uh, look, Ten Hag is he? He knows how to develop young talent, but I don't think I don't know if I'm always scared to give coaches who are good with young and like young formidable teams and like young talent opportunities at like the big big clubs because. It's tough working with those. It's a whole different world working with like characters and people who are like 15 times richer than you. <laughs> like these guys are rich, rich. All right. Martial is probably a billionaire. That man made so much money. I, it was crazy. He was $80 million signing like six years ago. Okay. And he's 23. He's probably going to be a billionaire soon. So, so you think it's Pochettino? tough. But if I'm going to go between those two, I'm absolutely going to go with him because Pochettino has shown nothing. A funny thing, I would love to see. Pochettino show that he can do something somewhere else. Show show us why you deserve this mantle. You were given the opportunity 12 years ago at, at Tottenham. You zeroed out the, 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 the win since then. And then the only time you made it to the Champions League finals that goofy year that both teams made is a really weird year where, where they had Tottenham final. It was a strange year. You made it there. And I'm going to give 100% credit to my boy, the Korean Ronaldo. He's the reason you got there in the first place. So no, I don't, I don't think that he deserves another top tier position. Make, make make him go to like Watford or something. Get it cracking at like Watford or Wolves. Go to Wolves. I want to see what you can do with the Wolves. They got a lot of people that don't speak English or whatever. Have a good time, all right? Because Bush, you know, still don't speak English after all these years. <laughs> no, man, it's been like 10 years in England. He don't speak English. <laughs> um, I would definitely. No, Bush, you know, for sure, no, no. Yeah, no, I would definitely go with Tanag just because I still look at Man U and I'm like, can you just run a 4-3-3? Like, it's crazy how little teams in the EPL run four three threes, and I feel like you get Ten Hag, and at least he can implement like a solid four three three. Well, I don't know why you put that shirt there or towel. I don't know why, but I don't want to know. Um, I do it on the floor. And I'm hey, like, that's, like, that's okay. in the frame. I don't no, want to Ten Hag is it, but like, I mean, you're just giving me two options. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get AGD. Yes. See. See. Um. <laughs> um. But, but yeah, I think that. Um, you know, imp, like yeah, he does. He does really straight up four three three. Like really training up. that four three three, like that, mm-hmm. like you know, that Ajax kind of born four three three style, would be really good for Man U right now. But it'd also be good for I think some of those young players. But we'll get into them in a little yeah. bit. If they can get just some kind of like four three or Dutch coach that can do that, it'd be great for Man U. Yeah. Okay, Caesar. Should players care about individual awards? Yeah, they should. I think so. I mean, at the end, of the day, I think I think do I think awards are corny? Yeah. Do I think that the the awards that are going on right now? I don't even understand what the hell is going on here. What the hell is a FIFA twenty two player of the year? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Why is Jorginho up there again though? Um, do I? But I think players should be acknowledged because even before you go into a camp or go into a season, you're spending your time alone putting in work into your craft. So you deserve to be acknowledged for that. You deserve to be rewarded if 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 that's the case. Now. We've already discussed on the show that Ballon, Ballon d'Or is done wrong. Maybe these awards, I think a lot of these awards are done incorrectly, but those guys do deserve to, to be proud of their individual accomplishments that season. I mean, in that mentality is fueled players like Ronaldo, right? They're fueled by, you know, beating all the stats and, and being the best player and winning everything. So th- if that keeps them going, uh, you know, I think you should definitely be uh, show love to what you've earned and, and uh, deserved. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I mean, I don't think a player should be disappointed if they don't win an individual award, but no, no. I think it's, uh, you know, when you're a professional and that's like, you want to be the best. And when you get recognized for it, like, yeah, you're going to celebrate that, you know, your people that grinded, that grinded with you from the beginning, going to be proud of you. So yeah, I do think um, players should care. Like you should be striving towards those awards because those, you know, whether it's fair or not, like if you're in that conversation, that means you're one of the best, you know? Absolutely. Um, Caesar, what do you think about the potential? Apparently this has been stated by this player that he wants to do this. Luis Suarez to Aston Villa to reunite <laughs> with his buddy, Stephen Redcard Gerard. <laughs> sure, man. I don't care. 
whatever it is, you can't hang out in Spanish League no more. It's over, dog. There's too much running around. If you watch that football game, there was no way Suarez could have played that game. He would have died. That was the most running 100-minute game I've ever seen in my life. That was the most action-packed extra time I've ever seen. These extra time suck. That one was not stopping. Those guys are definitely need to take the weekend off. Do not let them play on La Liga this weekend, please. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah, Aston Villa, yeah, man, go ahead, dog. You, they got 80 games. They're going to sub you in with uh, the Jamaican homie. Yeah, dog, go ahead. Okay, what about this one? Balotelli to Newcastle. I've been saying this for years. Absolutely. Uh, abs- is that a rumor? I mean, I mean, it's like a fake rumor. Oh, no, make it real. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that's weird about Newcastle, they always get these converted wingers at striker. Balotelli would really be good to put in that middle. Let him, let him go there, play around a little bit. He passed that ball. Him and, and his besties there, uh, St. Maximilian Pegasus, who years ago, Balotelli did a video where he was grabbing his ear in a locker room and was like, see this face? He's going to be a star one day, grabbing his ear. I'm mad cute. Yeah, let him go back. Maybe he's over there pushing for it. He's like, y'all giving me Gucci headbands? It's not enough. I need Balotelli, too. <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, that'd be fun. He, he's playing over there in Adana in Turkey. And I used to have a little shorty that was from Adana in Turkey. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, in he's, college. He has a few goals. I think it's like five or something. Like that, five or four. Five or like, uh, he's a little shorty that's down there. It's, like, it's in the south uh, kind of part of Turkey. And there's an Air Force base there. And I think she ended up marrying a white dude from the Air Force. But she was Turkish from Adana. And I do remember her name, and I'm not going to say it. Although, um, if, you, although if you look that name up, there's like a million of them with that name. Okay. That name? Was it yeah. Ruby? Anyway, so uh, uh, um, Balotelli uh, did a video where he got into like some 1996 Hyundai Sonata and didn't start. There's no context to the video. He just walks up to the car. It doesn't start. It's like flashing. The battery's dead. And he's like, in English, he's like, shit. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what this video is, but I love it. It's a, he's he's low-key becoming a worker's man now. He's a progressive now. That's why. I think the world on drugs. Um, no more McLarens for him. Now he's in 96 uh, Hyundai Sonatas. Okay, Caesar. I don't know if you saw um, the situation with Kellen Acosta. No, I didn't. Is, is he... Um, where is he now? Well, he was at Colorado. Yeah. And he wanted to, he had offers to move to Europe. Um, and oh, of course, the, the, the CDM, whatever, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him. Okay, okay. What and and um they had some offers on the table, Colorado did, but they they made they forced him to transfer to LAFC and he came out against it and he was saying that um he, he was saying like I guess there was some tweet that came out. He was saying that the narrative, he said, this narrative is sad. Colorado pushed me out. They had an offer for me on the table from abroad and ongoing interest and opted to trade me. Um, So they did a trade with the LAFC, even though he wanted to go overseas. And and somebody tweeted, I was like, dog, professional slavery, dude. I'm like, that's literally professional slavery. And, and, And it's another example of how corporate capitalists funded, like, pushed um uh mls's because players don't have individual rights over what clubs they get to go to instead they're able to override these transfers by doing things that are only allowed within their own league you're not able to trade jimmy for steve overseas i can't i can't you, you can't give me coutinho if i give you uh kaylin acosta it doesn't work like that with europe so here in MLS, yeah, I'll give you that. And they, what they do, they, they they probably gave them like a targeted allocation money or some goofy mess, all garbage, um, absolutely professional slavery, dating back to a very old story. We made it talked about here. X, uh, 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 we made it podcast favorite Eddie Johnson since he'd uh, left me on Red Still, I checked out damn still red four years later. Um, <laughs> we had. Me and Justin had countless conversations talking about a whole bunch of nothing for years. Ask him one time to get in a podcast, left your boy on scene. It's all good though. Support with the culture supporting each other now. Um, allegedly. So <laughs> Eddie Johnson left me on scene, but he talked, had a great example. He talked about having the opportunity to go to Benfica at 20 years old. He played for the Kansas City Wizards or whatever, or the Dallas Burn, whatever the hell he was, one of them cool ass teams, dope ass jerseys. Turn, team turned it down and then uh, made him stay and then moved him over to Kansas City or something. One of the, one of the opposite ways. 
And I'm like, dog, that's messed up. Like, from what he is now, you probably forever stunted his development because him going to one of the best development teams on the planet, Benfica, he would have been playing. Yeah, it had been tough for him. He speaks English, he's American, but it would have been a good opportunity to see what he can do. They know how to work with players just like that. They get tons of Brazilian. He plays like a lot of Brazilian players do, very fast, athletic. It's been a great opportunity to probably get some great coaching. Who would have known what he turned into? So um, the top before, I think it's a sham, and that's one of the main reasons I hate MLS. It's, it feels like the players don't have a lot of control of themselves. They fought hard for the union ship, which West supported the whole time. Please unionize because that's what's needed in this super capitalistic country. Even in the soccer, they need to unionize. It's so damn bad. Um, um, and it's still, I think they need a, they, they, things like a cost situation should be something that that union they have should look into in the future. The renegotiation they had, it's great that you got player salaries up, but how about some player rights? If players have, maybe instead of being like, okay, if a player has offers overseas, they have a right to veto. Like in NBA, they have a right, like that no trade clause. They should be able to have a no trade clause. I don't want to go in MLS. I have a no, I'm waving my no trade in MLS. I want only a European offer to be accepted. They should be able to ex exercise that when they so do so, because as someone who only signs a private contract for certain years, you got to have some rights on where you end up afterwards. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it really boils down to there not being promotion relegation. Like there's no incentive. Oh, like yeah. the team isn't trying to like make money necessarily. Mm -hmm. They already have money. So like, you know, yeah, you might as well just like quote unquote trade the assets within your league because there's no benefit. So the season before LA Galaxy got Zatan, they were last place in the league, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're just kind of able to do whatever the hell you want. They have that goofy discovery system. Oh, oh, we saw him first. I'm like, this guy's been playing since before your league was founded. How did how did you discover the player? It's just yeah. it's a it's literally a joke of a whole organization at the top, top to bottom. Yeah, like MLS. Like, if you're going to be so anti the spirit of football, they should also get rid of ties. Like, you should get rid of draws. Just win or, win or lose. They should just go, at, yeah, make it the end. How about just do one-on-one? One-on-one, -on -one, uh, start at the, at the middle, and you just one-on-one -on -one to who scores first and old goalie. Whatever, dog. If we're just going to be xfl and everywhere, whatever, right in the middle to kick off, just do that. Because if you're just going to do whatever you want, go all out. Don't yeah. hold back. And you already it, and got it, playoff brackets with with the 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 taking two months to finish the playoffs because they're doing home and aways and they're taking three weeks apart. I'm like, what, what's going on here? And even and and like it is a shame that we're we know about that story with um Eddie jo excuse me Eddie Johnson from you know a, a, over a decade ago probably a long time ago. It's an old story, all. yeah. And you're still seeing the same thing in 2022. Like that's insane. I've seen so, him. I've seen him because he's a pretty good player. I've no, he's no, solid. Nothing, no, he's a pretty good player. He's good. He's a CDM. He's pretty good. I've seen him. He 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 played for Dallas before too, right? Yeah. Like I think he came up from Dallas system. He's a good player. He um, Hercules Gomez was talking about it on a short clip on ESPN FC, and he was saying, I mean, we had talked about MLS being a monopoly a long time ago. I didn't know that that was like also a narrative in the mainstream, but he was saying that oh, too. Really? Like he was saying that you know it's a it's a monopoly, and it's just like you know it's a. He was saying it's a shame that Kellen Acosta is like forced to move to. Los Angeles when he wants to go overseas and play. And he yeah, was saying teams he, are supposed to field offers and then there's a negotiation between agents and players on what they can go. It's not supposed to be like, yeah, that offer is good, but we're just going to force this trade to happen. Like, yo, uh, yeah. And hell? He, he was saying like Kevin Acosta was like kind of like the pool. He was kind of like the Pulisic before Pulisic, not because he's a goal scorer or whatever, but like he was a really good American player. Yeah, he's a good but player. like just been like forced to stay in America. And now that I think about it, hmm, mm. I wonder if it has anything to do with his. I wonder if he'd be able to go to Europe if that wasn't the case. Yeah, maybe if that uh, color was a little less melanated, maybe that skin was a little less melanated, it would have been had a different story. Because they were trying I mean... to get Jordan Morris out there, he was trash. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Uh, Acosta, especially like he's. Hmm. I'm not trying to like. This is not even a hater comment. Like. He plays CDM, not extremely difficult to be good at CDM in terms of the skill set base. You got to be a pretty good defender. He has some good skill. He probably would have transitioned well in Europe. I've seen him play. He would have transitioned fine at whatever probably Europe league he was going to go. I don't know if he's going to go to Belgium or wherever he's going. 
he probably would have transitioned to well, you know, if he would have went to the Finland. I don't know where he was going, but hey, man, maybe he's trying to go to Norway. He read about the democ- the, the the politics there. He's like, yo, what's cracking with Norway? Oh, wow, you get that? I'm going to have a baby out there. So maybe that's where he's trying to go. And now he's in L.A. And he's probably getting paid the same salaries he did at the previous club and paying for a way more expensive crib. And I feel bad for him. So all the best for you, Akos. The ho- hopefully it works out and they make some change in the future with the union and stuff like that. Because it shout, is a monopoly, straight up. Shout out Miss Mix Discaroo, who's literally only 31 years old. No way. <laughs> sort of God. Well, Mix Discaroo had the... Uh, you know what? It might be Melvin because this dude got to go to the Man City for a year and just take a vacation, never play. Then he went to to uh, Korea and said he had the time of his life. Come on now, man. Mix Discarude is only thirty one. He was supposed to be that guy, right? He was supposed I, to be that dude. I liked him. Me um, too. He, Caesar, he's, you know what? See him. You know what's funny? Who's um, better, Mix Discarude or Rabio? Mix Discarude? Are you killing me? <laughs> 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 Okay, Caesar, you know what's really funny? Because we were talking about this on the phone either yesterday or the day before yesterday. Um, and then they talked about it on ESPN FC. It's kind of funny. Uh, they had a question, has Marcus Rashford peaked? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> we were they listening to our phone call? Because we like it wasn't even like we planned to talk about that. Like the conversation just ended up getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> and so that, they were asking, has Marcus Rashford ratio. peaked? He fell off plus ratio. <laughs> Like, like, do you think he's re- reached his uh, peak? Yeah. Well, you, you think so? Aren't you, aren't you the famous person that said, like, you told me a long time ago, like, oh, and someone's like a certain, they, they don't get better than this or just this, right? Like, didn't you say that before? I have like, said that before, but I, I, okay. I don't think this about Marcus Rashford necessarily because I don't think Marcus Rashford's ever really had a good coach. That's a good fair point. I think he's peaked because in terms of, are you talking about like his performance like like like, like has he has he, or his like, skill set like like kind of like how you said about Verratti like he's 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 pl- he's plateaued like that's oh. like I don't I don't think you know what I'm gonna god I sound biased I'm, I'm gonna say no I think that he's peaked in terms of what he can achieve at either Man U and with because I don't think they're ever gonna really get a good coaching situation ever figure it out Honestly, like unless they get like a Dan or some like legendary coach, then it's just gonna be rough forever. And even a coach like him is probably gonna have pretty low patience, to be honest with you. I think he's the a prime example of he needs to go somewhere to reset a new beginning, a fresh start, and, and a place where not even maybe outside of England too, where he can just be out there get get running and get playing where they can like like when Depay went to Lyon, like that'd be cool if if Rashford went to like Lyon or something like that, where he can just be that guy and not have so much spotlight and stress on him. He's from the area. He's a neighborhood kid. It's all that. That's a lot, dog. That's a lot to ride on. And he's never had a consistent coach in his life. And so I think that for the skill set, I need to see more by him being somewhere else. Until then, I I still think there's there there's there's consistency that he hasn't been able to show yet. Um, since he's been on the on the first team, he had Louis Van Gaal coach the senile jose Mourinho, um and then solskjaer and then this guy right now so it's like you never really had somebody that's gonna like really really train him and like teach him and like show him the yeah. real good football so yeah i kind of agree like i feel like at man U, he might have he might have peaked there at man U unless they get somebody like really good that can really teach him um but yeah if he went to another team um with a, like a different culture um and maybe like a team where somebody like Marcus Rashford shows up the other players like are gonna like oh like I got something to prove against this guy so it's gonna force him to like even perform more you know yeah I agree um okay well that's the end of ESPN FC questions and really quick I just want to say that uh Caesar and I have talked about this and um, I have tweeted about it I think that the Charleston Battery of the USL Championship or whatever, I think that name is uh, is, is uh, promoting the legacy of the Confederate Army, um, the racist lost cause that was fighting for slavery. Um, slavery, which is a detriment to my ancestors and for Caesar's ancestors and for everybody's ancestors. Slavery isn't good for white people either. Um, so... 
what I'm planning to do, I kind of want to send uh, Dr. Gerald Horn an email and be like, hey, um, cause I sent him an email before about, Hey, like you got anything about to say about racism in soccer? And he was like, I don't got nothing to add about that, <laughs> but I kind of want to be like, Hey, like there's this team. And I feel like it, like that name promotes the legacy of the Confederacy. Like, what do you think? If he says yes, I'm going in. Cause I was going to go in. I was like, you know what? Let me pump the brakes. You know, let me ask an expert. You know what? I've known you many years. That's one of the very, like, that's a legit, like, that, that's a real, I want to give you, like, a real good handshake off of that one. That's a great, that's a great move and idea. I think we can all be 100% for sure we're right, but there's nothing wrong with getting Another a second opinion. opinion, right? Even when uh, I go, I could go to a renowned worldwide neuro- neurologist, but I still want a second opinion, right? You still want a second opinion. I need one. I need a second opinion um, because especially someone who's literally dedicated their whole life towards, you know, a majority of life, at least towards history. He's a historian, especially American history as well, too. He knows so much about it'd be wonderful to think what he thinks, because we can all have opinions and people can combat us or combat us online. And they if they want to defend a Confederate uh, name, good for you, dog. But here's a historian who would actually tell you legit facts. I think that would be more incumbent because. I, th- I think it's something we could all learn from the situation. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, and because, yeah, in my heart, like, it, it's like, wow. <laughs> um, and I think it's a shame. Um, I was actually looking for contact the USL, like the league. Um, I've tweeted it to them. You know, of course, they're not going to reply. But hopefully we can get black soccer culture uh, to support this. Because I think it's... Um, you know, obviously we have sports teams names in this country that are racist and despicable and racist in all manners, um, not just in professional sports, um, in high school sports and college sports, like it's all over. Um, and I those, feel passionate. Those, those, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I feel passionately about that too. Um, but it was just kind of mind blowing when I saw that name. Charleston Battery, and my first, like my heart told me that damn, this is a name like that has to do with like the Confederate Army. Yeah, and it just kind of shocked me that I, I'm like, I never even heard of this team, and it seems like the people that have heard of the team never really thought about that. And yeah, now we got to get it in potentially. I'm gonna email Doc Gerald Horn. We'll see. If he's like, no, nah, it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna be like, you don't know shit. Yeah, I might have to, <laughs> I might have to put that one emoji on. No, him. no, no, no. <laughs> reply back, whatever. <laughs> might have to put, might have to reply that, that Aguero emoji back. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, reply back. It's on site. Um, I might, have so. to, might have to reply back that uh, one animal on the bike emoji. <laughs> <laughs> tap dancing um, um uh, Warner Duck. Brothers characters that, yeah. that, 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 that Daffy Duck with the, with tap, the Daffy Duck tap dancing uh, emotes of uh, uh, gift sent back no um oh yeah the gift I'm saying emoji <laughs> yeah emoji I'm like what the hell um no I I think you're right um you know there was a lot of there was it took a long time even in this country just for the Washington Redskins name to get changed who I remember from the first time I was young, I thought that name was very weird. I'm like, what, what is that? I remember asking people legit when I was young, what a Washington Redskins went. No one even knew what that was. And then some people that told me, don't say that word. I'm like, what is this name of a team? <laughs> there's that, there's the Cleveland Indians. There's very, there's a lot of names in this country that are very offensive. And then a team like Washington, rather than take the opportunity to change their name and to being something more inclusive, they're going with something goofy like, uh, they're named after some kind of naval thing or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, who, you had an who, opportunity. Who? The Washington FC football team, whatever. Now they're called the Washington football. Oh, team. The, yeah, they're just like the Washington football team now. They're gonna be called the. No, they already announced their. They leaked their name is gonna be like the Admirals or something like that, or some kind of naval name. Oh, okay. Um, they already released the jerseys and told the players apparently to okay. get their opinions. But you know, like they could have been something really cool and and community based, or you know, something out of Maryland that would have been really cool, or something about historical. But whatever. But that 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 was a name that I'm a lot of people defended. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people were like, nah, man, like, what are you talking about? Like, if and people were saying talking points, which I hate, which are like, 
oh, but that, that doesn't mean that. You know, like we're showing respect to the community. No, you're not. You, and you don't get to speak to those people, the indigenous, you don't get to speak for the indigenous people who are offended by this. And that's the same thing that can apply to Charleston Battery. You can defend that name if you want, because it's maybe it's something you came up in your region. Maybe it's something you've been accustomed to. Maybe it's something that someone told you it was okay. But if some if a, if a historian like Gerald uh, is Gerald Harris his name? Sorry, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Dr. Gerald Horn. Dr. Gerald Horn says, no, actually, that name was actually embodies the 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 Confederate side of the war. Then my friend tell me this maybe your whole life people have been telling you yes to something that's actually really not right the wrong side of history especially you if you're an individual that is black that's absolutely not the side you want to be waving that flag for there's people yeah, and hopefully if you're and, white too yeah only if you're white too of course yeah like you know there's people out there who who are who are supporters groups maybe there's people there what are they called the the generals or whatever i remember I, the regiment maybe if you were part of that regiment whatever they're called they're waving that flag and you might want to be that one person who kind of goes, what am I doing? Uh, I, I don't know. This doesn't, you know, after what I heard and after what I know about this, am I really going to be repping uh, this Confederate name if it is? Uh, look, dog, look. Name, so. Washington is already a damn, uh, you're already named after a former slaveholder. That's bad enough. But don't be no damn Washington Redskin on top of that. Um, that's definitely that's definitely a double uh, double <laughs> lightsaber right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to say that this isn't coming from nowhere. No. Caesar, the funny thing is, like, when you just said Charleston Battery, like, I felt it in my heart. Just like you it just makes said it. Saying that word. Yeah. The Charleston Battery, like, the battery of Charleston is literally right next to the Confederate Defenders of Charleston Monument. Okay? This is not, like, some random thing I'm putting monument? together. Huh? Why do they have a monument? You said you want to go there? Why do they have a monument? <laughs> you said you you said you've been there? <laughs> uh, I've never been that far in America. <laughs> um yeah, it's it's right there next to the Confederate Defenders of uh of Charleston monument. And I feel like the team, like the Charleston battery team, huh, their stadium isn't like it's not far away, but it's not like the same part where the um where the uh that where the Charleston battery is. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's still part of the same, you know, region or whatever. But yeah, I, I just like, I feel like that's a name that is celebrating the legacy of the Confederate Army. Um, anything you read about the Charleston Battery will mention the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Um, obviously, South Carolina was not part of the North um, by any means. Uh, we've heard of Fort sure? some, huh? You sure? We've heard of, we've heard of Fort Sumter, which is right the, near also the Charleston Battery, um, and yeah, I think that that team should change their name. I think that that's, I mean, now once again, UNLV is the Running Rebels, and their colors are gray and like red, which is like as Confederate as it gets. And that shit's in Nevada, like, <laughs> but. So we have issues. Like, I think Ole Miss is the Rebels. Like, we have issues. But this is a mostly soccer podcast, and that's a soccer team. You know, soccer is like the international sport. You know what I mean? And we have a lot of diversity in this sport. So if if Dr. Gerald Horn responds in the positive, the campaign will get started. And Caesar will not be backing it. <laughs> I'm gonna be right there with the with the. I mean, Caesar. Ima okay, imagine this. There's not that many countries that. There, there, no, no, no. There, there's not that many countries that like fought a war to end slavery. Okay, that had to fight a war to end slavery. Imagine that if you're in Haiti, and there's like a team named after like the people that were trying to keep slavery there. Or like, yeah, this is the fort. This was like the last stand of the fort against the Haitian Revolution. Like, you know, the 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 Haitian Revolution won, but you know, they they almost lost it because this place right here. We're gonna name a team after this place right here. That's insane. I hundred percent agree. I mean, um, look, we, we we're. 
if we're a society that's about bringing awareness to the sport, if we want more inclusion in the sport, we want more diversity in sport, that doesn't just go with having players on the team, but that goes about what these teams, these teams were named after the message they sent, you know? Yeah. If Charleston Battery wants to stay Charleston Battery, then they can go ahead and, and try to do that, and we can disassociate from them because I wouldn't want people to be affiliated with that. Don't don't, don't be affiliated with that. Don't support that. Then, no. yeah, unfortunately, there's are there are core people who, core people who do whatever they want to do. Like the battle it was to change the Redskins name. That was a battle. It's been a name like that for a long time. And everybody's favorite. What was everybody's favorite uh, uh, rivalry? Never thought that was weird. Cowboys versus the Redskins, like everybody's favorite. Like that's a really wild uh, setup. Like life isn't a John Wayne movie. Life is real, and real things happened in history and in the past. That wasn't just cute cowboys. There's real stuff going on with these people who suffer from genocide, literally by this country. So we need to move towards getting rid of these garbage. I mean, America's already garbage with its history and recounting it and retelling it. Let's do a job of making that message even clearer by getting rid of those names, by, by making a change. If if there can be, uh, if Nashville is called Nashville SC, why on earth does Charleston need to be battery? Why? Uh, these are MLS teams. I'm going to keep a road dog. Nobody give a damn, okay? What was his name? Uh, uh, Sebastian, uh, what was the, the German guy? He went and played for Chicago Fire. He has no idea what that means or what that meant. Even they changed their name. That was named after a fire department that took care. The name that was named after the fire department that went and helped during the Chicago fire. That was the name of the team. Okay, and they just they yeah. changed it too. They changed it too because he'd be called. So it, it's important to to just make these changes so we don't have to, you know, keep remembering or have especially the wrong side of history. Let's 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 switch it up, please. Um, like, wasn't there like a big? Wasn't there a big fire in Chicago back in the day? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Like, no, you know, there was, there was, actually, there was, yeah, there was. But what if their logo was like the fire, like the whole city on fire? Come on, man. I mean, I'm, I don't want to be mean, but that'd be a dope ass jersey. But look, okay, man. Man. I'm being funny. Listen, okay, yeah. 18, 1871. Yeah, I remember that fire. <laughs> God damn, it, it was yeah. pretty big, it was pretty big fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the San Jose earthquakes, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's these names. <laughs> no, hey, what's but, going uh... on here, man? Actually, <laughs> what the fuck? You're looking around the room. <laughs> is this the? Are they the? Is it about to be the LA riots? Like, what's going the on? The San Andreas fault line. Like, what's going on? Yeah, it was next the the the, the protests. <laughs> God damn. I mean, there was a um. Wasn't there an XFL team called the LA Riot or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. Holy shit! This is about the yeah, like the Miami Hurricanes. What's going on? Man? That's, oh, we got man, we got a lot of work to we got do. A lot of work to do. <laughs> What's going on here, man? man? I, just... I like the Canes. It's a cool name, though. <laughs> no, actually, it was it was in a video game, Delhi, right? Okay, never. Mind. Um, it was Yo, old... come on, man! But anyway, yeah, so I, we, you Charleston, don't need all that. The Charleston Battery is, you know, there's some things that are more serious than others. I just feel like a soccer team that like celebrating the, the legacy of the Confederate army is just really egregious. And we're going to see what's up um, because, you know, there is a fight in this, in like the soccer space of America for more like inclusion and diversity. And you can't have that without um, accurate, like I mean, you can't have that without taking to task things that are like really harmful. You know, um, something can, celebrating the, the legacy of the Confederate Army is just like harmful, in my opinion. And I said this on the phone or, or, or I said this off air. Charleston Battery is younger, is, is, is younger than me. OK, this team was founded in 93. Your boy had been walking around in Brazil eating popsicles on the beach. I've been around the block by then. There's no don't don't let's not play games with history. And let's not be weird. This team wasn't funded, wasn't created in after the war and in and, and, and celebration of the North winning or not. No, they're called Charleston Battery. They're made by a guy, a guy from England founded the club. A London based individual came here, and founded this club and it was in 93. OK, so let's I know people are very 
and ambitious in this country to make history and records. OK, but even back in America's history, there was a lot of changes happening all the time, too. It wasn't they weren't thinking like, well, we got to do this now and forever. You know, like there was change in, in ratifying and changes even back then that we talk about today. So you can make it for something in a freaking 93. OK, 29 exactly. years ago, a lot of y'all are older than this team. So let's let's just and aren't even in MLS. They're 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 in a USL pro. They're second division American club. Come on now. Unnecessary, completely necessary. 100%. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we made it podcast episode 237 out here um, in a few in a few weeks. In, in about in about four months, it'll be five years that we made a podcast. Um, and yeah, we'll see if it lasts. <laughs> but holler and uh, stay black and stay proud. And um, rate us on Spotify. Yeah, watch our YouTube, please. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Although I did see that you, you, we made it had more views than my my channel did in January. Wow, I don't know where these views came from. It's like five hundred minutes watched. I was like, damn, who's watching our stuff? That sounds trash. Bye. <laughs>